two, team keep it clean, what's going on, it's Engraven here with another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, which is a series where you can ask any NFL question and we answer it in a video. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Y'all can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to join the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. If not, just stick around right here because we got some fire questions like we always do. First question came from my boy Brandon and appreciate you being a patron. He said, Engraving with Lamar not practicing, do you think we should just let him sit for the remainder of the season? Yes. Yes. Because it seems as if if they do do anything this year, uh, it would just be like not even necessarily pointless, but almost pointless. Um, it, because it would be rushing him for the short term and it could have potential long term impacts that would just wouldn't be good. I, I feel like the whatever his injury is, was and has been, I feel like it's worse than what the Ravens led us on to believe. I think it's almost been one of those things where um, it, it's it's one of those things where they, they were holding out hope like, all right, well, maybe if we could win a couple games and we could slide in, maybe he could come back for the playoffs. Maybe. But it's. It just seems like it's it's something. It's obviously really bad because he ain't played in what four, five games. Man, when the last time we seen Lamar play? Was it? Man, I don't even remember. Oh, the Browns game. The yeah, the first quarter, the semi quarter of the Browns game, and then that was it. So wow. Um, but yeah, I just sit him, sit him. That that that's it. Oh, but he he also said it feels like there are a lot of fans wanting to force him on the field. But I think that will only further injure our franchise guy. Yeah, there have been some fans that are like, oh, man, um, when I was in high school, I had an ankle injury and I played right through it. Oh, well, hey, when, when, I, when I played football and I had a bruised bone, I just ran it off. But they failed to realize that they weren't about to get a huge $400, $500 million contract. They weren't playing for that. I think a lot of them forget that they, when the, the situations are much different. That's why context is so important uh, just with everything. Uh, but anyway, um, he said also, is trying to make the playoffs even worth it? This injured Ravens team would just be another first round exit and further continue the narrative of Lamar being a choke artist. What if Lamar isn't even playing? Uh, which, I mean, I, I, I just don't expect him to play like at all. Um, I know for a lot of fans, they feel like it's not worth it. For me, uh, I feel like it is because you just never know. I know the team has been beat up, bruised up, banged up, all that good stuff. Um, but I feel like you should never throw in a towel uh, for anything. And I just, I, I know the expectations will be low even if the Ravens do or did make the playoffs. But still, you just never know what could happen. Maybe a lot of the decision making and a lot of the play will all just all of a sudden get better uh, if they're in the playoffs. But I mean, so, yeah, I wouldn't think it would be for nothing, but I just I don't really think it happens. Next question came from my guy, Matt. He said, hey, Graven, hope the fam is doing well. Now, in regards to the Ravens offense, do you think it would be beneficial if Giro called plays from the sideline as opposed to calling plays from the booth? Uh, I see a sense of disconnect between him and the players. Might as well try something new. It may lead to actual adjustments since players can communicate to Giro things that they see on the field right then and there in person. What do you think? I, I, I love that. I, I love that question. I love that, that answer. I love that solution, too. Um, it couldn't hurt. <laughs> I mean, I know it's only one game left of the season now, um, but it, it, it couldn't hurt. Well, he sent this when it was actually two games left in the season. But, yeah, it, it, it could not hurt. Couldn't hurt because, yeah, they could have some direct communication with him, talk to him, the, the quarterbacks, the running backs, the receivers, the offensive line. They could all talk to him uh, right then and there in person, and it could be like, all right, hey, well, okay, maybe I'll I see this a little, a little bit differently. But that would take adjustments to be made on Giro's part, and that's something that uh, he seems to fail at. So, but it, it couldn't hurt. What's the worst that could happen? That's the way I look at it. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, he said, also, do you think next year g Rowe could formulate a dominant run game featuring J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards without the threat of QB design runs? No. No. I, I don't think that this offense with Greg Roman would ever be an offense that does not feature the designed QB runs. I don't. I, I don't have 
any confidence in that at all. Initially, when I was first reading the question, and you said, oh, could g Row formulate a dominant run game featuring J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards? I was thinking, okay, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But then you said without the uh, the threat of design QB runs, and I was like, oh, okay, oh, no. Um, I think the formations and motions used in the QB run game create schematic flaws and limitations in the pass game. Mm, that makes it difficult for any Q QB uh, to push the ball downfield and win games that way. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Especially with that personnel, man. Especially with the personnel, man. It, oof. He said, unless you're an MVP that can run a 4-2. <laughs> Changing the offense in that way would allow Lamar to become more of a distributor. Put more receivers on the field and get deeper in the passing game. Yes, this is my biggest frustration when they have Pat Ricard out here running all these routes like he's a wide receiver or even a tight end. No. The personnel, the, the way that they scheme personnel, it, it can be laughable sometimes. Anyway, he said, what do you think? Sorry for the long message. Thank you and bless up. Appreciate you, Matt. Next question came from my guy, Dominique. He said, what's up, Engraven? Another close game lost, a uh, game we could have put away but didn't. Down in the red zone, we found uh, no capabilities off of opportunities and too many field goals when we needed touchdowns. My question is, when we got in the red zone, what do you think the problem was? Was it play call and execution or a combination of a little bit of everything? That drive, when we kept giving it to Murray, we should have just kept giving it to him and scored. Uh, yeah, down in the red zone, they just, they just stopped. They just, they just really stopped. And I think it was a, a mix of a few things. I think play calling just seemed to be off. I was like, I was wondering why they they just weren't letting Tyler Huntley throw. Like on there was a run on first down, like from first from like I think the two yard line, something like that. But um, there was a, a run on first down. I was like, okay, they ran on first down. Okay, cool, whatever. But then they ran it on second down too. And I'm like, no, why, why did you do that? I, I didn't understand that, especially with the situation at hand. You're trying to score. You need to score. Um, it was just like weird it was really weird uh and then going against um oh the the, uh, the name is blanking oh von miller um there was some whiffs by patrick mccarry where von miller just was like oh i'm going right past you and for the ravens to consistently run like right at aaron donald it just I don't know. Some stuff just be so crazy, man. It's like how 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 is this even uh going down? But that's that's been this season in a nutshell. Uh and he also said I think this lost um it put a damper in our playoff hopes, but all we had to do was take care of our own business and we fumbled the bag again. Uh we need help from other teams and one is for Jacksonville to beat the Colts and I don't think that's happening. So my question is who on the team as a player were you most disappointed in this season? And who as a coach were you most disappointed in this season? Oh, my goodness. What a question. Wow. My second question is, what changes would you like to see happen? Oh, wow. This We could do a whole episode on this uh, question alone. Uh, but anyway, which player was I most disappointed in this season? Um, mm, Player. Uh, wow. I guess overall... Um, maybe Sammy Watkins. And it's like a weird disappointment. It's because with Sammy Watkins, uh, he started off strong, started off hot, being very involved or whatnot, but it ended up being the same thing that a lot of Chiefs fans talked about, uh, Bills fans, and like stuff that we talked about too when the Ravens first started flirting with Sammy Watkins, injuries. Injuries. And, and I know a lot, pretty much everybody on the Ravens been hurt this year, but injuries. Um, but it seems as if once he first got injured, um, that was like the beginning of the end. It's like we never heard from Sammy Watkins again because he started off in the Raiders game, had a really big catch in the Raiders game, uh, made some plays in the Chiefs game. And I know he did slip and then that slip ended up being a pick six. But uh, he made some plays in the Chiefs game. And then, of course, in the Lions game, he had that big catch on fourth and 19. It was like, all right, let's go. And then... Um, it's like once he got hurt, that was it. That that would seem like that was the end of his season because you just never really heard from him like that again. Um, and I mean he did catch the the one touchdown. I think that was in the Steelers game. I want to say yeah, that was in the Steelers game because then they went for two right after. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, it was just that that was the beginning of the end. And I uh, I just expected a little bit more uh, from Sammy Watkins. I um. And then the coaches, they, they really stopped putting him on the field at that point. And, I mean, I could understand why, too, because you saw Rashad Bateman and, and Sammy Watkins was supposed to help usher in 
this new regime of Ravens wide receivers. Um, so I'm sure he's done a lot like off the field. He probably coached him up and stuff, probably gave him some advice and whatnot. Um, but this is why I uh, I said when we were first off flirting with Sammy Watkins, when we there was first the rumors about possibly the, the Ravens possibly signing him, this is exactly why I said the Ravens cannot put all their eggs into that one Sammy Watkins basket. We know he can play. We know he can catch. We know he can run. We know he can ball. But we don't know if he can stay healthy. And that's been the biggest question mark. Biggest question mark. I remember so many Chiefs fans, uh, a couple in particular, well, one in particular, um, a couple in particular talking about they, they were like, oh, yeah, Sammy Watkins, he good for a couple games, and then he good for the playoffs, but regular season don't count on him. I was like, oh, yeah, that's kind of the expectation. Um, but somebody called him like six games, Sammy, or something like that, uh, to where you get a good six games out of him, but that'll be it. Um, so, yeah, and that that was it. And then the, the Dolphins game, he, he wasn't fully healthy. I, I don't think he was fully healthy in that Dolphins game to where he caught the ball and then the fumble, the fumble return for a touchdown. It's, it's just been um, underwhelming. It started off like, oh, yeah, oh, let's go. But then it ended off like, oh, man, oh, no. Um, and as far as the, the coach that I'm most disappointed in this season, uh, I would probably say John Harbaugh. And, and the reason I would say John Harbaugh is because – of um i just feel the, the 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 unnecessary there was a lot of unnecessary stuff that was done this year uh especially in against the browns and the steelers and the packers um with the, all of the, the the two point conversions it's just just a lot of unnecessary stuff um and, and that ended up now the ravens hate cuz i know some people be like oh well hey if the ravens if the ravens um if the Ravens went to overtime, they still could have lost. And they could have. But those all those two-point conversions, they took away that opportunity. Well, not the Browns game, because they got the onside kick back miraculously. Uh, but they yeah, they still lost. But and it, it just situational situational football has just it, it's just been been bad this year. It's been bad. Um and I just that that's who I would be the most disappointed in. Uh because you know the situation at hand. You know your roster's depleted. You know this and you know that. But for him to put the team in those positions, I know, hey, if it would have worked, it would have worked. I still wouldn't have liked the call. I would have been glad that it worked, but I still wouldn't have liked the call. Um, I just didn't feel like it was the, the smartest thing to do. Um, and, it, and, and for it to happen time and time and then time again, I was like, well, I, it just, it, 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 it was crazy. It was crazy to see. And... Um, it, it just, and, and also too, with the, uh, with the decision-making of the roster, like, uh, with the handling of the roster, that's been another thing that I've been, been very disappointed in. Um, like with, uh, with Tyson Williams, we know our, our running game this year, pretty much a wash, but cause we lost JK and we lost Gus and we lost Justice Hill. Um, and we I even had a banged up Lamar for the longest and then we lost Lamar, but Still, for, to to have Tyson Williams just there, just there, and you see like Devontae Freeman. The more Devontae Freeman has been getting carries, he's been looking better and better as the season has went along. Latavius Murray, he didn't really start looking better until Ben Cleveland got in the lineup. Ben Cleveland got in the lineup, Latavius Murray been looking better, but Tyson Williams just been there, getting nothing, being active a lot of game days, but getting nothing, and it's like. This is a running back that you know could give you a spark. You know, now, now Latavius Murray, he hasn't fumbled. Devontae Freeman, him and Lamar had like one fumble early in the season. Then uh, he ain't fumbled the ball either. So they've been holding on to the ball for sure, which is great. But the, 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 there's that explo explosiveness. Uh, Latavius Murray, he's not explosive. But um, Devontae Freeman, he has looked more explosive and more comfortable as the season went along. But... Tyson Williams gave you that explosiveness from jump. Imagine if Tyson Williams could have been getting some decent carries and, and he could have given you that explosiveness too. And even when Latavius Murray was out, and, and then they, they did have a Le'Veon Bell, but he's not explosive. Tyson Williams, like, he could have gave, given you an opportunity and you could have worked with him instead of just throwing him under the bus. You could, we're about the fumbles and stuff and about, oh, yeah, as a running back, you, know how to, you need to know how to pick up blocks. You need to know this, the you could have worked with him on his, but no, they just threw him under the bus and just left him there. So it was just, it's disappointing. And then like, 
even this past week, uh, well, whenever you're watching this, I'm recording this on January 4th. So the game uh, that we just lost against the Rams where James Prochet, he had seven catches for 76 yards last game. And, yeah, it was in a blowout, but he still had it. He still made it happen. So that's him. He, that's him getting into the rhythm. So a lot of times guys will get into a rhythm in one game and they'll carry it over to the next game. But then you have him inactive so that rhythm can't be carried over at all. You just eliminate the chance of that period. And I, I just, it, yeah, so it, it, it would be him. I could go on more, but um, it, it, it would be him. Uh, he said, my second question is, what changes would you like to see happen? I would just like to see this uh, a philosophy shift, a philosophy change uh, for the Ravens. And instead of all this ground and pound, no run, 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 and play good defense, they need to air it out. It's time to air it out because Lamar's future is in jeopardy, depending on what the Ravens do or what they don't do. Speaking of the Ravens and their philosophy, next question came from my guy, Bert. And he said, Greg Roman, shouldn't he be fired? He had no solution to Lamar being blitzed for four weeks when every commentator could diagram the problem and solution. His red zone plays are predictable. Every week, one receiver disappears. No one offered to help Lamar with his lack of progressions, which caused receivers like Brown and Bateman to be open but get ignored. And Huntley's ability for the long passes is ignored. Obvious problem. So should Greg Roman be fired? Well, he could be. But what's that going to solve? What's that going to solve? Because it's, this is why I say philosophy change. Because Harbaugh would just hire another guy. And it will, we had the same conversation all over again. Same conversation all over again. He would hire a guy that either failed as a head coach. Or a guy that doesn't have it, that, that is not going to be considered to be a head coach. And we, it, it would just be the same thing over again. So should Greg Roman be fired? Hey, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, but what's going to be the solution at that point? I just, I don't have much faith in this organization to, to make the right decision when it comes to that. I hope that things change, but my expectations, that they are very low when it comes to this situation. Next question, well, statement came from Zoe. He says, Sean Wade would be nice, wouldn't he? LOL. Ooh, you so petty. We must believe to achieve. Next question came from my guy Rico. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. I know we are shorthanded, but why must they keep putting Villanueva on the field? Uh, it's clear that he is not a good fit. He, his nickname for me is Vanilla Wafer. But in all seriousness, the line is the big problem when that ball is snapped. So Engraven, why, man? Why haven't they benched him yet and let Patrick Ricard take his spot, LOL? Oh, just kidding on that part. Okay. Because, boy, you scared me with that one at first, man. You did. Um, they, they may feel like they don't have any, anything that's better. They, 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 they could feel that way. Um, but yeah, with Villanueva, uh, yeah, it's been rough. It's, it's, it's been rough this year. This hasn't been a, a great year for him. Um, but I just, I don't expect him to be back next year. Uh, but I, oof, we, we will see. But I, yeah, I don't expect him to be back next year. Uh, they could keep him for insurance for just in case for Ronnie Stanley, just in case for just really the offensive line, period. But you could also go a lot of other routes with the left tackle or right tackle, too. Um, so we'll see. But you um, like I feel like they, they, they got to the point like where, where, where they might have felt like, all right, well, who, who's going to be better than Big Al? Next question came from Lish. Say, what's up, Engraven? Sending blessings to you and your family starting off 2022 with a bang. This isn't so much a question, but I had a feeling that the Ravens were going to be in a slump eventually during the season. So I got to get this off my chest. I've been a Baltimore Ravens fan for at least 15 plus years, and we have always been a solid team, regardless of any situation we put in. The only thing missing is faith, and I still have it for some odd reason. Play calling and coaching has been consistent, not pretty nor explosive, but consistent to where we are put in tough situations that we came short uh, of, but we only seem to see when we don't succeed, nor consider the fact that this team is doing what it has been doing for years. The whole season was over before it started, and for some reason, I don't think all that work was put in just for us to fall short. What if we make a run in the playoffs? What would be the narrative with the organization, players, coaches, trainers, medical staff, etc.? Um, that'd be nice. That'd be nice, and I would love to see that happen. I would, I would love to see that happen, but, I mean, we, we won't know till we know. Uh, but what, what, what would be the... Uh, what would be the narrative? It would be that, hey, despite all those people getting hurt, 
Despite all those bad decisions that had been made, despite all those questionable decisions that had been made, despite a lot of plays that got left on the field, despite so much, they were able to overcome that. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving, right engraving.